everybody, Josh Yarvey Nerd here at my Coldwater Michigan hometown store. And if you are looking for a uh, uh, something for full-time RVing and you want like clear separation, like I don't want a kitchen and living room mingling, I want separation, this right here kind of helps define that class and it's the one that a lot of people use as setting the standard. This is the Montana 3761 that we're looking at today, but they also make a 63 which has a butler pantry instead of a half bath. So if you don't want to crap or you eat, you kind of have your choice whether you do or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's great about this one, it has an elevated rear uh, full bedroom with bathroom ensuite. And by elevating that, um, there's still plenty of headroom in the shower, even for a bigger person like me, but it creates a huge chunk of outside storage space that most front living rooms historically have lacked. Now, a lot of manufacturers make something like this, and they all do their own special little twist uh, and weigh on this. So what I want to do in this video is show you the areas where this one really shines and maybe where it might fall short for you and give you some good with the bad info and let you decide if it's the right one for you or if maybe something else might work a little bit better so again it can be a bath and a half you could have a butler pantry if you go to that butler pantry though people have to walk through your bedroom to get to your bathroom now that's only an issue if you feel like entertaining friends and family but that's one of the other cool things about this one with the dual hide beds up front and a privacy curtain in the separated living room you can create like a, a weekend private sleeping space, a little deluxe apartment in the sky on this one, basically, in that uh, you know elevated front living room area. Obviously got that power televator right there. This also does a couple cool things, like it has factory standard solar of some variety. We're looking at the minimum 200 watt today, but you could crank this thing up to 11, or well, <laughs> 1200 watts, as it were, and you can really juice this thing up if you want to. I think for the most part, though, a big full Monty like this instead of a high country, you're probably going to spend more of your time in parks rather than out of them, but I could be totally wrong about that. Now, uh, again, if you like how we show you the ups and the downs and everything in between, we've only just scratched the surface, hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think about this one as we go through. Or at the very least, if you appreciate what we're doing, just leave me a little note that says, hey, thanks, nerd. <laughs> So when you're in these big, higher-end fifth wheels, you know, the bigger budget things, they if you look at them in, in like a Venn diagram form, they overlap pretty hard. There's a lot of very close similarities. Where Montana has always pulled ahead, and the reason that I think they're the number one selling fifth wheel in the history of history, well, it's in the details. And they are an extremely detailed brand. Like, I love that almost like air traffic controller accent lighting above all those ceiling fixtures and the crown molding. It is fantastic for what I call stealth mode camping, where like if you're using it as a night light, or if you're trying to like, you know, watch a movie at night, you don't want all the overhead lights on. It's not quite as aggressive. This year though, this island, the little trim work and stuff they're doing on that island, ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. It just gives it some awesome little eye candy and eye appeal in an area that very often is just left flat and boring. Now, notice that it's all solid surface countertops here in the kitchen. And interestingly, you actually have TV hookups uh, downstairs here as well. So uh, maybe you're not quite as vertically gifted as I am. Maybe you're not quite as tall, as it were. Maybe you're more gravity-friendly in salesy terms. Maybe you can't see over that little hutch. Eh, sometimes it's nice to, you know, not have to deal with it. Now, up top here, where you see that uh, rain-sensoring Max Air vent fan, you also see a little power junction box with a sticker half coming off of it. Well, that is um, basically where you tap into that if you wanted to put a third air conditioner on this. That's a neat little thing that they do on these. Now, again, what's nice about this is the clarity and definition of, like, Kitchen versus living room. Everything, it, it, it's a little more home-like in the fact that it's not just kind of all in one space. Although, ironically, you watch any of those, uh, you know, home design shows and where they go in and they remodel houses. What do they always say? We're going to knock down this wall. We're going to open uh, the kitchen up to the living room. Like It's like clockwork. They say the exact same thing, I swear, every single time. Now, um, up top here, you've got a little different setup on the air conditioning system. This is something Keystone stumbled into, uh, where basically you've got these little Vortex-style air vents, and there's more of them per square foot in this RV than most brands. By having more outlets for the air and the style of outlet that they have, it keeps the noise down lower uh, because you're distributing that across multiple points, and it gets the air into the RV more quickly for better CFMs, cubic foot per minute of airflow. So... They, uh, they don't have a whisper ducted system, but they, and it's funny, every manufacturer claims to have the quietest, best cooling air conditioning system out there. What I think 
I think many of them are perfectly sufficient. That's what I think. Notice the nice little detail touches too up here on a full Monty, like on the slide side box inside there, house or USB outlets rather, so you can sit there with your you know devices charged up. Now, one of the things that I mentioned on this was the fact that it makes for an awesome little uh, alternative sort of weekend uh, bunkhousey kind of thing, and that little privacy curtain right there is definitely part of it. Now, the thing is, if like. You're looking to get your second RV the first time. If your kids are teens, you might actually want to look at a fifth wheel like this instead of something like a, uh, a traditional bunkhouse. Because if the kids are teens, they can set up their own hide bed. They can entertain themselves up here at night. And since, you know, the living room isn't part of the entire RV, you can have different things going on like up here versus like you could still be adults outside and then, you know, walk in and get to your bedroom in the back and not really disturb anybody. There's no direct line of sight. I'm not saying this is an awesome alternative for a bunkhouse. I'm saying that it can work for a weekend. But the other thing is, this is good not just for kids, but adults. Now, obviously, at my height, you may have noticed how my feet were hanging off the uh, the stuff a little bit. But the fact is, uh, I, I could make it for a weekend on this. Like, if I was going to go visit my friends or my parents and they had a setup like this, we could totally make this work for a weekend. Guest storage is certainly limited, but I think you kind of deal with that when you're a guest. You sort of live out of a duffel bag a little bit. Um, you may have noticed also there's some excellent upper deck headroom in here where uh, you'll see that repeated in the uh, the rear bedroom and bathroom. You never really feel cramped and shoved uh, down inside one of these things. You saw that power televator doing its magic. Electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down below. But one of the things that uh, I, I forget to talk about a lot because it's kind of unseen is the fact that you also have, uh, I think it's an 11,500 BTU heat pump up here. So you've got like 16, 17,000 BTUs of heating in your living room between the fireplace and the, uh, the heat pump without ever cranking on the furnace. Plus you have 12 volt thermostatic tank heaters standard on these. Um, you know, you basically have an electric and a propane heating system that you can operate simultaneously in conjunction with one another, which I think is pretty cool. Now, uh, over here, they've changed up their theater seat a little bit. Previously, it used to have like a little removable kind of pontoon style armrest in case you wanted a little more cuddle compliance. They went with a more traditional like mine and yours fixed theater seat with a little remote control storage armrest down below. You've got all your little, uh, you know, controls and everything over here. I still wish they would put these uh usb plugs on the front side of that arm what do you think about it wouldn't this be a better place for that because if you have a usb device plugged in there it feels like if you've got you know bigger thighs you might break the thing that's always one of those things that kind of goes through my head and i wish i wish we could turn one of these hide beds into a desk but unfortunately you you really can't because something that's less obvious in a front living room is the fact that if you watch the slide fascia notice how it stops before it actually goes to the floor because that's the bottom of the slide. The slide doesn't actually go all the way to the floor. That is a, uh, a pretend face of a sofa hanging off the front of that slide out. So if you tried to put a desk in there, your feet would be sitting up by your chin. Like you'd be knee bashing yourself in the chin every time you tried to scoot in the place. Did you notice, by the way, um, two section day and night roller shades is a nice little find. But if we're being picky, and I think at this price point, it's fair to be a little bit picky. Not having a shade in the entry door feels like a weird, weird miss for an otherwise extremely well-detailed brand. Like, that's just one of those funny little things. Now, if our combined feedback can get brands like Cougar to start including that shade in the door, maybe, if you feel the same way, we can once again uh, combine our efforts like Captain Planet, basically, and um, <laughs> our powers combined... And we create ourselves a uh, an even better Montana next year by sharing that feedback with the factory. Uh, when I get consistent points of feedback in these comment sections, I do share that with the manufacturers. They don't listen to me. Sometimes they listen to you. There's a key difference right there. Now, notice, too, they're going with a little more kind of home-style-looking stovetop. The cool thing about that one right there, you can actually get, like, three, uh, you know, bigger pots and or pans all cooking on that thing at the same time. And as Mary Poppins would say, that has brought us back to dough. So what I want to do is I want to pivot real quick and take a little bit more detailed look at the dining arrangement down here on the lower deck. That is a marine woven floor. That is not a, uh, a carpet in the slide floor, which is nice. So if you have a little spill, it's just a little more forgiving to kind of clean that up. 
And that is a full depth slide, as you can really tell by how much space there is in there. Now, just like we saw in the living room, you've got dual section day-night shades in here. But what's kind of nice is down below, they got the little chair buddy holding the chairs in place. And of course, they have a pair of fold-away guest chairs for this thing as well, uh, which, you know, you can kind of see one set up, one not set up right there. Now, uh, while we're looking at the kitchen space, a couple extra little details, like the fact that this does have a central vacuum unit, which is cool. It's actually in the steps as you're heading into the upper deck. But along with that, it has what I like to refer to as the electric dustpan, where it's just a, uh, a little kind of <laughs> sucker point, basically, that will uh, anything that you're sweeping up down here in the lower deck or anything that you sweep down from upstairs, uh, well, from both upstairs, I guess, you can just push right into that thing. Um, did you notice over in the kitchen space, you also have a handy little pop-up power tower. And if you start looking closely, you might see several outlets in the RV have a yellow sticker on it. From this distance, it's kind of hard to see what that might mean. But basically, that's telling us that's an inverter prepped outlet. So, uh, Keystone was really one of the very first manufacturers that, that began including some level of factory, uh, you know, inverter allowance or prep. Uh, and their more advanced solar packages, anything more advanced than the base package that we're looking at today, uh, you will actually have some level of factory inverter installed there. Now, right now, we're looking at the 3761, which adds this handy little half bath for us right there, but there's also the 3763. It's the exact same RV until you open this door. And where this one has the half bath, and giving you a look at all the storage and everything in here, the 3763 has a walk-in butler pantry. It basically has extra storage space. And there are some people who will say things like, I don't want to crap where I eat. You know what? That's fair. I can respect that. They make it both ways. A lot of manufacturers still do not, interestingly. Um, and I'm kind of curious. What is your take on that? Now, statistically, overall, what we're looking at here, the bath and a half version, is like the two or three to one popular model. And if I had to guess, I think it's partially because if you do have any kind of guests over, they don't have to walk through your bathroom to go all the or bedroom rather, to go all the way back there to the, uh, the, the bathroom ensuite. Which is where we find ourselves standing right now. Now, one of the interesting 23 updates is that they bumped these all up to um, smart TVs. Previously, they were HD, but they was dumb, uh, like me. They were not smart televisions. Now, remember when you saw me standing in the living room? You have the exact same ceiling height back here in this room. 70 by 80 king bed standard. You can option into a 60 by 80 queen if you want a little more walk around space. Obviously, the king seems to be the uh, most commonly uh, preferred thing here. And giving us a, uh, a, a little look around up in the headboard area. Notice you got your side uh, slide breeze windows there. Also, you see those household and USB outlets in the slide box. That is another one of those ultra fine detail little things that they do very well here that a lot of manufacturers simply do not. Now, you've also got those handy little bendy lights, but let me get you up close to those things to give you a little better look at them. Uh, I've, I've been told those can work for like uh, traveler CPAP machines and whatnot. I'm not a CPAP user myself. I'm not well educated on that. I know that what I would use it for is like a, a wireless phone charging pad or something like that. Now you saw the big closet next to the bed. That's actually basically like next to the, uh, the bath and a half space. That's where your washer dryer would be located. Now, a lot of people have asked, can you get them to build it with the washer dryer hookups instead of a half bath? And as much as I would really, really like that, the answer is no. Basically, the plumbing is all preset, and that is not something that we can uh, have changed for you. Uh, however, once again, your feedback, if they hear the same thing from enough potential people, they tend to find ways to make things happen. It's kind of funny that, uh, the way that that all works out. Now, as I back up, notice how that TV's cranked down a little bit. That is a, a nice little nighttime neck saver right there, so you're not cranking the neck around. And there's a, a sample of one of those inverter prepped outlets that I mentioned previously. Now, the bedroom door over here, what's kind of cool about this, they, they, Montana does this in a lot of their models. They got a little magnet hold back right there, and it tends to grab. I see people say uh, all the time, and I would really appreciate it, actually, if there's some Montana owners that could chime in in the comments section, have you ever had a problem with your magnetic uh, bedroom door popping open on you? Because the general feedback I seem to see is no. No, it, it seems to work uh, just fine. We don't have uh, an issue with that. 
Now, uh, let me kind of give you a whole scope of the bathroom here. One of the things that I want you to get to see also is that this one, uh, I was a little bit surprised. The left-handedness of that toilet was fantastic. The right-handedness of that toilet, well, it was less fantastic, strangely. And I don't know what it is about my nasally voice, but it's causing those, um, those sinks to, like, resonate. Whoop. Of course, now it quits. You can't hear it on camera, can you? You guys just think I'm crazy. Anyway, instead of uh, me worrying about that, let's take a look at all the storage around here in the bathroom, which is actually something this thing does very, very well. Now, what's your take on the dual sink thing? Does this need dual sinks? I'm personally of the belief I don't find a lot of benefit in dual sinks in, like, um, almost any RV. And to be fair, yeah, there's more room in here. But I would almost just, I'd almost rather have more counter space. I'd have, I'd like to have one less thing to clean under. That's my two cents, but I'd like to hear your opinion on it. You see, we got a fiberglass, one piece molded shower. And again, awesome headroom up in the shower. And that is a height adjustable shower head fixture, which is cool. When you're in a multi um, height household, like myself and my wife, where there's, she won't let me say I'm a foot taller. So 11.9 inches taller than her. Um, you know, that'd be, that'd be a handy thing. And one of the cool things here, when we get up to full Monty, praise the Lord, you're not stuck with the four inch fart fan and you don't have to spend extra money on top of this thing already just to get better airflow in the bathroom, which is so annoyingly common. And seriously, tell me you can hear this. You can hear that, right? It's been going like this the whole time. <laughs> Now, I have always felt that a big fifth wheel like this is best used at a destination and not on the way to a destination, but I understand how important road mode access and function is for folks, which is why I take the time to close these up. Now, I don't know how important it is getting to the living room, but we're sitting there, so I figured I might as well look at it. One of the most important things you need in transit, potentially, is access to the fridge. And not only can you get to the entire refrigerator or freezer, uh, which not a lot of big fifth wheels offer, but it, uh, it's also positioned in a way where um, if you're uh, in service need, that refrigerator, every Montana floor plan is designed so that the fridge can go out the door and not necessarily have to like pop out a window or open a slide or anything like that. Now, beyond that, frankly, folks, we can't get to much. Now, if you're looking for a front living room fifth wheel that does offer some decent road mode function, check those links in the video description that I leave for you. North Point Alliance, they both do some front living fifth wheels that actually have very good travel stop friendly uh, kind of features and layouts and whatnot. And if you appreciate the fact that we address this for you and even showcase the RV close up, even when it really doesn't provide awesome access, we'll give you a fair look at things. Hit that subscribe button and like our video. And let's hop outside. All right, so first and foremost on the outside here, let's talk towing. What's it gonna take to move this big sucker down the road? Now, I, I, I think anytime you're in a full Monty, Montana, one ton is kind of the default answer, potentially duly as we get up to these big guys, especially when we have multi slides up in the front of this thing. Um, that just, uh, I don't think you're going to ever regret it. Uh, having that extra kind of payload and stability. Now, apologies here. Uh, the, the camp face side of this thing is all up against this line of trailers. Our uh, lot manager here, I asked him, hey, could you pull that big Montana out so we could show that for people? He goes, oh yeah, no sweat. I got it all out there and opened up for you. Not fully understanding or realizing what it is that I do here. He moved it right up against the face of these trailers and I, 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 I felt bad. I didn't want to, you know, ask him to redo anything. So we're just kind of uh, rolling with it a little bit here. You see, we got the David Blaine stable steps on this one. It also has a couple other handy little things. It does have a, a you know, a handle you can pull to, to pull the screen door shut or the whole door when they're hooked together like that. You also have the little pet defender guard on the front to avoid the cat scratch fever on your screen door. Um, believe it or not, dogs more than capable of delivering cat scratch fever. Now, we've got some decals over here, but you can see between them how you've got that high gloss, high shine on the front of Montana's. That's one of the nice things here. Uh, in the front of this, we're looking at the default front end here, which is no generator, no gen prep, but these are all capable of being outfitted with uh, gen prep or a generator, which is why you see the perforated punch outs down in there. Now, pardon my vest over here blocking our whole battery 
box area. There's actually like three disconnects on this Montana. First of all, this is the Giggy box, which just hard kills all power to the uh, the battery. But one of the cool things they've added for the 23 season is a, uh, a, a disconnect specifically for the solar package to make sure that that solar controller um, you know, doesn't end up overcharging anything while the RV's in storage. Or if you have the battery off, sometimes those solar controllers can kind of try to, to pick up the slack and live power certain things in the RV, which can sort of wear things out. So it's actually kind of cool that you can just flick a switch and shut that down, basically. Now, uh, if you want slide awnings, that's available. We're looking at a base model, so if you want to go Legacy Edition and upgrade things further, you can do that. That's a way to get in command, uh, as well as a bunch of other things, like disc brakes also come available in the Legacy package. That's a whole different thing, essentially. Um, the uh, uh, If you go Legacy, then you can actually also... Um, apply a full paint package to this. Now you've always got those Montana details like you saw that enclosed privatized docking center. Little stinky slinky sewer hose hookup thing. But Montanas are and have been uh, the, the general phrase that people like to use nowadays is four seasons. But they've been 0 to 100 degree rated uh, and proven since 2005 and counting. They're one of the very first brands to do that. And they've changed almost nothing in their heating package since then. They uh, did one little tweak in like 2009 with their uh, water fittings in the underbelly. And then they did uh, recently here standardized 12 volt uh, tank heating pads on these. And those are thermostatic. If you don't know the difference, thermostatic tank uh, heaters won't sit there and constantly heat your holding tanks and potentially melt a hole in them, which believe it or not, I have actually seen. Um, I'm not going to get into why we saw it. All I'm going to say is that somebody flicked a red switch that they did know what it did and the end result was a melted hole in the holding tank that we had to fix. Uh, these won't do that. These only kick on when it's about 40 degrees in the belly and they kick off otherwise. So they're there is like an emergency freeze protection method. Now, no RV is guaranteed to be fully functional in sub-zero uh, conditions for an indefinite amount of time. But Montanas are the kind of thing where we've had some wicked Michigan polar vortex winters uh, over the last couple of years where people have been full-timing in these and they've made it. Now again, apologies, we are right up against the side of this. You might consider taking a look at my 2022 footage that I put together on one of these because the exterior basically looks the same and you'll get a much better view of the door side of this. If I don't remember, remind me. I'll leave you a link in the description to check that out. But note the dual patio awnings because one of those covers the entry door and the kitchen slide well that doesn't leave you a lot of patio space so on the back side here uh basically off the uh the bedroom area that's where they have a second awning where you can sit there and enjoy your picnic table stuff without uh you know um <laughs> being baked by the sun with pure sun exposure now you see we've got that 300 pound rated accessory hitch down on the bottom there. Uh, this is one of the very few that doesn't have a full towing hitch. That is an accessory only hitch, although physically it's the same hitch. It just doesn't have the four way wiring or the safety chain harnesses. So as a result, it's called an accessory hitch, not a towing hitch. If you notice too, this is where I was saying, they came up with a way of overcoming the potential lack of uh, exterior storage on this to a massive degree. And you might notice that actually passes all the way up here, you know, under the uh, the bathroom ensuite up to the full bedroom area. Just one huge, massive storage compartment. A neat little thing too. These uh, flip up baggage doors. They uh, well, they're a magnet hold back, but they they catch and they lock. And then look at this. Look under the slides here. You see how they're using a, a little bit different skin on the bottom of the slides. If you're going to be in this RV a long time, if it's raining and water's washing down the slides right there, they want to make sure that those slide floors can't rot out on you. So they actually, you know, put an extra little skin and uh, kind of protect it there. Now, last year, there was a bit of a ladder shortage. Of course, the one that I recorded last year ran into that shortage. Obviously, that's been uh, resolved. There's absolutely no signs of any sort of ladder shortages for the 23 season. So let's take a look at that, get you up there on the roof. Uh, of course, you got that fully walkable roof up there. You've got the dual 15,000 BTU air conditioners with white shrouds to really maximize their uh, function and uh, effectiveness. Every big Montana like this is also prepped and ready for a third AC. You uh, you might lose like a, a kitchen ceiling vent or fan if you want to apply that. 
But if you want a third air, that's where it would be located. It actually just direct dumps. It doesn't even tie into the central air system because your bedroom and bathroom, well, that's a small space. Uh, you know, your front living room is a smaller space. So they just dump all of that in the, uh, the, the biggest room of the RV to help provide maximum cooling. Now you may have also noticed we had the, the minimum 200 watt solar panel package on this. You can get 400, 600, or even 1200 on a big Montana. This is the only series where you can get the full 1200 solar flex package. Now something else I forget to talk about on Montana's infusion specifically from Keystone, they're the only two members of even the Keystone family that enjoy what I'm about to share. All of your sidewall cuts, where your slides are routed out, where the windows are routed out, they're all CNC routed. They're all machine precise within a thousandth of an inch. And it's that extra little detail and precision that you get on these that might help make or break the difference for you. I've never claimed any RV perfect. I've never claimed any RV the very best for every single person out there, but I'd love to hear from you folks. Let me know what you think. I've done my best to try to share, you know, in a uh, positive or negative light as the case may be, like the, the travel access or lack thereof, trying to be fair with you. If you like that, hit that subscribe button and check the links in the video description. If we have one of these in stock, we'll have it listed there with pricing and understand it could vary by tens of thousands of dollars from shipping from one store to another, which solar package you have. We always keep current pricing on our website site anytime we have something in stock. It's the best way to get you accurate info. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Bye.